Well, we can go ahead and start the meeting. Yeah. Uh, just so I can go ahead and share. This is a special meeting, uh, December 19th. Uh, purpose of this special meeting is a discussion of the legislative session priorities with the ports lobbyist. Um, resolution 2022-018, purchase and sale agreement for the Allen Carey Community Water. And then set a date for the January 23 uh, regular meeting and then discussion of new meeting minute guidelines. So it sounds like uh, Holly got on. So hi, Holly. So you're first up, Hello, Holly. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, so I'm, I'm first on the agenda. Yes, you are. I can get us started if you'd like me to. I would, thank you very much. Okay, great. Hello, Holly, everyone. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Yes, good morning. Um, my name is Holly Kochi. I am the lobbyist uh, for the Port of Allen. Um, and we, the goal today is to discuss uh, what we will be asking uh, the state during the 2023 legislative session, which begins on January 9th here in a couple weeks. It's coming right around the corner. Um, it'll be a 105 day session, uh, so a long session. And we have an opportunity to uh, request funding um, and it's looking like we should be requesting funding for uh, the peer. So Larry, I don't know if you wanna go into some more detail about the peer or if you guys have had those discussions. Sure. Um, as you know, we've had some of the filings on the peer that are deteriorating. And from the looks of it, um, they're not gonna get any better. What we had thought about was when we drove the pilings for the oyster house that maybe we would drive, have, since somebody would be here doing this, that uh, have them drive the pilings, new pilings for the pier. But it's come to a point that the little uh, alcove on the pier, the piling underneath of it has rotted completely out. Uh, we've closed off that section of the pier but in talking with all of you, uh, you know, I've just put forth the idea that maybe we should look at replacing it with concrete pilings, get the creosote out of the water and either composite deck or concrete deck, either one. But, uh, and I, I think that's the best course of action. And I think having Holly start looking for planning money for that makes the most sense for us but that's your decision not mine but that's what i think we should do well it sounds like a long-term uh solution uh commissioners any thoughts well uh, we need we need to definitely move forward on uh on that prospect of um holly um, trying to get funds to, to uh, resolve our problem down at the pier. Um, pretty much a no-brainer for me. <clears throat> yep. I agree. Uh, anytime we, on the plus side, anytime we get crew assault out of the Puget Sound, ecology likes that, so does fish and wildlife. So it would, it would improve our overall habitat for the shellfish. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we could get some uh, from the squawks and tribe and Taylor Shellfish and the other shellfish uh, companies in the area to support us going forward and redoing that pier with more ecology friendly products. That would be uh, that would be my vote. That that piers need to be worked on for a lot of years. So yeah, concrete pilings and uh, uh, rather than a, a concrete decking, I I'm in favor of a composite. But that's another discussion. I'd like to see us move forward on that. Okay, there you, there you go. go. Yeah, there you go, Holly. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so some action items, which I know you all love. Okay, so um, first, Larry and I are going to work on trying to find, figure out some type of estimate um, so we can figure out what would be best to request uh, and what would be viable. I don't, I don't want to be requesting too much and then our, our projects left behind. Um, so we'll, we'll work on trying to find that correct number um, so we can get started on working with somebody with design. Um, 
The other thing is uh, Commissioner Jackson made a great point about support. We, um, we should put together a letter of support and have different community logos on it that support this project. And we need to get that in to our delegation as soon as possible. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to help draft that up, um, but I will rely on you all to help me get those logos and get that support. Okay. Otherwise, I'll I'll work with Larry. We'll start working on the request forms, and and I'll um I'll touch base with our legislators. Um, given our last conversation with them, they were they were supportive of 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 a peer type project. Um, so I'll reach back out, let them know that's what we would like to do. Um, but we a community letter of support would be a really good idea. Okay. Yeah, we can start rounding those up. Great. And and Larry, uh, correct me, but I believe there was one or two ports in the last three to five years that did complete peer replacement. And yes. I'm just trying to think of their names. And I know they'll come to me as soon as we sign off, but uh, if, once I do, I'll, I'll let you know. Anacortes has done two big projects. They, they completed one. They're in the process of doing another one. And I have reached out to the director there I talked to him at the uh, WPPA meeting and then uh, shared some emails back and forth with him since then. He's given me the name of their guy that's handling that project. And I've reached out to him to try to get some information about, you know, what would be a number to start with. And didn't uh, the pier in Port Orchard get replaced years ago? It's probably about 10 to... Yeah, I was mayor then when that happened. Okay. And, okay. Uh, at the time, that was about a seven hundred thousand dollar project to replace the whole thing, but it wasn't nearly as big or as wide right. or anything else as ours. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think the the Anacortes project is is pretty comparable, and that one was, I believe, around two to three million for the to total project. Um, and Larry's, you know, going to touch base with them, but uh, I think we could make a you know, in the realm of a $500,000 request and ask for um, design and whatever that would, whatever that would cover. But, um, and then there is also a grant program through the Recreation Conservation Office. It occurs every biennium. So we've already missed the, op the opportunity to apply for it this biennium, but just for future funding opportunities, um, when we want to take the next step, this would be a good opportunity um, to take advantage of. Yeah, if we get planning money, then we can have the plan in place and then RCO yep. would and Yeah, exactly. that's great. Yep. Okay. What's next for our projects? You know, I think that is more than enough for us to ask for this session. Okay. Um, and and it might be a biennial effort. Uh, it might it might not happen this session, but we're going to try our hardest um, and showing our legislators that we're making movement on our other uh, our other capital budget awards as well always shows them that we're getting something done and we want to move on to the next project. So um, I'll give them a status update on Oyster House as well. Uh, and that's that seems to be moving forward, which is great. Um, now that we have the Army Corps permit figured out. Um, so going out to bid today. Great. Yay. That's great. <laughs> um, so I think that is about it. Unless there is anything else um, that you've heard from the county that you all would like to weigh in in support of, um, I think that is going to be our main request for this session. Okay. I agree. Yeah, I don't I can't think of anything else right now. I want to finish what we've got on the table. So yeah. would, that would be great. Great. Thank you, well, Holly. Well, Thank feel you. free to reach out if you if you think of anything, but in the meantime, let's get a letter of support and I'll communicate with our legislators. Okay. Will you get Perfect. the uh boilerplate uh letter to Larry so we can yes. get it to our other constituents? That'd yes, I will do that. Okay. 
Great. Thank you, Holly. I appreciate yes. it. Thank you, Holly. Sounds good. Have a have a good rest of your morning. And Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Okay, next is the uh, resolution 2022-018. Uh, got an email from Jeff this morning um, with some concerns and with Department of Health and their things. Oh, that was one thing we were going to ask Holly was, is there a way that we can extend it? She is going to reach out to them uh, and see about that. She's had some working relationship with the guy that won't return phone calls or emails to me. So okay. um, yeah, she's going to reach out to him today. See if we can't get an extension on that. So, but without an extension and considering Jeff's email, I don't see any point in trying to move that forward. Yeah. Um, well, but we'll have, hear from Jeff. Uh, comments right now, commissioners. Did you get the email as well? Yeah, I, I, I've got it in front of me and I read it. And uh, um, I'd, I'd love to hear from Jeff, um, followed by whatever commissioners I want to speak to about this matter. Okay. Uh, uh, Commissioner Jackson, do you have any? I agree with what the uh, executive director said, um, but yes, definitely hear from Jeff. Yeah. Okay, Jeff, go ahead. Um, we read your email. We're all very concerned as well. So we'll have some comments, I'm sure about it. Go ahead. Um, thank you. Um, one, the email kind of spells it out. Just there's, there's a couple of components. One is, I do believe as stated in the, in the email that uh, while we're not done with the agreement, I, I truly think we can, you know, get through all the points and eventually get to agreement. We're not debating price. We're not, you know, we're not having any of those kind of issues. We just have to get the particulars worked out. Um, um, you know, to, to this point, you know, Larry and I have been able to work out through most of the issues and, and, you know, there's some things I want our, our attorney, Debbie's and my attorney to look at before we move, you know, you know, sign on the dotted line. But um, so there's, there's some things that need to be cleaned up on that. Um, as far as, the, you know, the final paragraph <laughs> of the email yeah. dealing, dealing with the water service, um, you know, I was disappointed about that, to put it mildly. Um, uh, sh that should never have happened. And, you know, I, I'm not, at, at this point, all I can say, there's a little bit of frustration and obviously <clears throat> that whole handling of the, what's handled so far, you know, just kind of wrecks the trust between Debbie and myself and the port. And um, so, you know, I, I think the commissioners sh should, you know, look into it, I think, the, you know, and then get back because yeah. it's, it's definitely not the way the port needs to run the water system. It's definitely not the way we intended to work work this between the port. And it just puts a bad light on the port. It puts uh, it puts a bad light on all of us. Are you, Jeff, are you talking about particularly weighing in on, as I wait, if you don't mind, sir, um, uh, as I weigh in on this, um, you talking specifically about your comment uh, on billing the customers? Uh, yes. Okay. And, and no, and no discussion or, yeah. you know, um, I, I was and, not and, aware of that. I, I'd love to hear Larry speak to that directly. If you don't mind, Jeff. I mean, that, you know, so I, be, sure. I would, yeah. I was going to have Larry do some explanation on that. Um, he's explained some of that to me, but go ahead, Larry. Well, this all comes down to the fact we're trying to get <clears throat> Cedarland's houses closed. Jeff extended service to six of those, even though he's only supposed to supply 14 connections. That gives him 20. And he actually has 15, not 14, so that's 21. Um, those are our connections. Jeff isn't allowed to connect to them. Those are our connections. And in informal discussions we had with Jeff, we told him we were going to bill him. And he didn't have any problem with it. In the uh, memorandum of agreement that they sign, it specifically addresses that issue. It says those six connections are our, uh, 
ours to connect connection fees from as well as bill for water. So I don't understand why there's a problem there. Yes. And I don't think there's a trust issue there. I'm actually kind of offended by, by that. You know, I feel like we've worked in good faith and worked hard that, you know, the timing, I will agree, is tight, but that's through no fault of our own. Department of Health has refused to respond to questions that I've had about this. Holly is going to reach out and see if we can't get an extension. If we can get an extension, I'm sure Jeff and I can come to an agreement about all the points. Okay. But if we can't, or we can't get an extension, then I think we just need to walk away from this and figure out what we're going to do about those six connections. Okay, well, I have no comment on that yet because I think that's part of the negotiation. I think for me now, you know, commissioners, you need to weigh in on all this too. It kind of depends yeah. on the Department of Health. Yeah. If they aren't yeah. going to extend anything, then we're kind of up against the wall. Um, and Jeff, you know, you well point taken about the commissioners need you know the county commissioners need to weigh on, in on this too and they haven't had a chance so the timing is uh really rough yeah, and i yeah. recognize that <clears throat> and and i do too and you know i'll take some responsibility for it in the fact that trying to get the agreement written based on the boilerplate i was given from our attorney was very tedious and time consuming and and I understand Jeff's take about I need more time on this, but you know I was given a 14 day time from when we submitted the application, and that 14 days is up tomorrow. So is there is there a way? Um, can I? Is it okay for me to ask yeah, Jeff a direct question? Um, Jeff, is there a way to do um, an interim agreement? Um, and and I guess Larry, you can answer this question followed by Jeff's yeah. response. An interim agreement where we can shore up um, that deadline. Um, I mean, is that a possibility? And and then work out some of the other little details that Jeff, because um, it's obviously not a money issue. I mean, it's uh, there's there's some bullet points in there that he wants to resolve. So can we do an interim agreement? That's what I'm wondering. Rather than have to, I would have to find that out from Department of Health if no, they'll, no. if okay. they'll accept that. Okay. I think that's a good solution if they will accept it it's or if they'll just give us more time, either one of, you know, one or the other. It's a big, basically a conditional agreement uh, and whatever that looks like. Um, yeah. So we need to find that out. This is crazy. <clears throat> well, I, I agree. I mean, you know, I felt real bad on Friday talking to Jeff because I feel like I'm putting the onus on him to make a decision on something that's really important to him. Yes. And, you know, that he's, put his light heart and soul into yes. for all these years and but you know our back was against the wall for timing i mean that yeah. was the whole thing it's just about that if we had more time we'd be fine yeah and jeff we and i'll speak to that i weigh in on that i i um i wholeheartedly agree with what larry just said and we do respect the fact that you, this is a um, situation where you've got your you know blood sweat and tears over the years and and suddenly you need to make a response uh, we're asking this because that's just the, the parameters we have to work with so i'm hoping we can work something out jeff real quick <laughs> just for all parties concerned yeah as far as interim um as larry knows i've you know I've, I've been pushing to get you know any form of agreement that would help get this through the department of health um you know, everything from an invoice to a, a short version of the contract. There are there are a number of nitty gritty things like um, we do want to provide, you know, obviously in providing the water system, distribution system, um, the port needs easements. But the way that a boilerplate agreement was constructed, um, it wasn't working right. In other words, in effect, and and Larry understands it. I mean, I'm not saying that there's a disagreement on understanding. I'm just saying that um, as far as getting the agreement done, these things need to be hashed out. There's got to be, there, there's most likely a process because we in the utility maintenance company still need those easements to maintain uh, stormwater and roads. 
Right. And it's not like we would sell and and however the transaction is, those are easements to the port. Um, and we don't and, want the easements for the road and the yeah. Sewer but there, are, but it, the way the way the, the easements are written, it's like for water, it's for power, it's for road, mm -hmm. it's for all those types of things. And so um, the port just needs to be, um, however technically, legally, whatever, you know, roped into the process and, and made part of it so that, um, you know, they have access. But at the same time, we still re need to maintain those easements for the activities still remaining after the consummation of, of this agreement. I see. Um, okay. And, it, you know, and, that, and that's an important point for both Jeff and us. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it, it's, it, it behooves both of us to work that particular issue out. Is, is there any reason why the, uh, that legal, from that legal standpoint, that that can't be um, uh, resolved? I, I, right? I believe it'll be resolved. It just came up Friday. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. Right. So, I, so I, I understand. mean, you know, to, you know, to come up with an instant solution when <sighs> law is not my top 10 <laughs> and easement and right away law is definitely not my top 10. Um, it was just a little bit trying to come up with a solution. Right. And well, who says, might best understand that in order to get um, resolve on it? Like within reason, within the next 24 hours. <laughs> right. I, you know, my frustration in the whole process of this is that while we didn't know all the parameters, there are things we, you know, we have known since August that, you know, we're going to have some type of opportunity. And, you know, I think we could have, you know, and there is admitted that we, there are some things we could have probably worked ahead in other words of this in the sense that, you know, you know, instead of dropping this on me on Friday afternoon, but, um, um, you well, know, I was still working on the wording in the agreement 10 minutes before you got here. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I understand. And I, I'm not, I'm not complaining about that. I mean, I yeah. understand what you're given when you're given. Um, in hindsight, I, I think there's you know some other things we could have done, but it is where it is right now. And that's, you know, we have to deal with what is right now. So he, we're going to work on an extension and then Larry also find out about an interim agreement. Um, to see if that could be dated the way the, the health department would like to see it um, before the deadline's over. <laughs> Combination of those two, I think that's where we're at. Don't you? Don't you think, Jeff? I don't know. Well, well that that and um, um, my wife Debbie will want to make a comment about it too. But okay. again, you know, sort of, you know, apparently there's a little um, disagreement between Larry and I and what transpired as far as this, these six connections right and that's fine i mean i'm not going to argue that point right at the moment but one would think that before you go into a system and you pull off another purveyor's meters and put on your meters that you at least have a conversation oh and I, even in other words we were working a number of things obviously by you know verbal agreement because we were, we, at least Debbie and I, were trying to help the developer get through and get you know his funds coming in and his financing taken care of in such a way. It all began with a simple thing that they needed to be, be able to do a test for a final okay. to get their final occupancy approval. You know, that was way, uh, initially the, my releasing it was back in March, I believe of this year saying, okay, in the end, you're not gonna have time to, to trunk up a, a whole new water line from the port up to these houses. Here's a water line that's sitting in front, the port and at that time and I had at least, you know, hadn't agreed on a number, but verbally agreed that we're gonna go through with this transaction. And so I said, well, you know, here's the thing we can do to test. And if, and, and when it goes through, there'll be, They'll be up to, you know, up to spec as far as health departments concerned and all these things. And basically, uh, they, uh, they would be able to uh, use, you know, because you you, the port would end up with our system anyway. And okay. so that was that whole idea is this was not going to take forever <laughs> to get so you, through. 
So you you really were just trying to massage the issue with a developer. In, in I was a, trying to help a, the developer. Yeah. I was trying to prevent the port having to extend a line up to them okay. or the developer extend a line from the port just to get the show under control. But then uh, then they, they they close a house. Yeah. Well, you know, and just, you know, it's like no one, there, there's no ill intent here I don't to, think. to a point. And, and all I'm saying is, see, and see the, the limit that the health department gave me, which was the 14 connections, yeah. we, we stuck to that. We later found out when, as you know, or don't may not know, we're managed by a satellite ma management agency. We do not make the connections prior to these six without their approval. So that's how we ended up one higher. They mistakenly approved one that shouldn't have been approved. Uh -huh. Okay, and the issue there is not so much that our system is not safe or unsafe above 14. The issue is water rights. And there's always a concern that when you have a limit, which ours is 5,000 gallons a day, that we would exceed it. They, they have their numbers and their factors and their number is, 14, you don't go above 14 to statistically stay below 5,000. Okay. Okay. In our case, throughout this whole year that those connections have met, been made, we have stayed below our 5,000 gallon limit, daily limit, except on six days, in which case the developer screwed up <laughs> and left, left hose watering going on on one, a couple of those six houses okay. during the hottest days where it ran all day. <laughs> and as you know, a sprinkler running all day doesn't Mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't cut it so again there there is no intent for us debbie and i or anything to try to get some to game the system in any way shape or form here by doing this this is all really to the benefit of somebody else and to help facilitate this whole deal along and that's why we feel offended that there's no communication just you know pull our offer meters don't even bring them back or anything okay so you know, I hear what Larry's saying. I disagree a little bit about the points, but I understand what he's saying. And all I can say is if, you know, if you have a system, let me put it a different way. If we were, if the, if the tables were turned and for some reason, you know, we're working this the opposite way, you wouldn't want me pulling in meters before agreements are signed and what have you. And the only reason my meters are on it is not to bill, but to allow the port to collect the revenues later on once those houses and all, all things come onto the port's, you know, system. They weren't they weren't there to for me to collect funds. Okay, I, I don't believe we have an unethical situation. I think we have a different perception on on um, on how to go about doing things, Jeff. That's my opinion, and I I, under, I understand totally. Larry's push to just get her done, and I understand you're you're wanting to do things a certain way, and so I just think that there's. There's that. Okay. Did you see? Um, uh, Debbie had a thing, a uh, okay. point to make. Well, the one thing that concerns me is we have a purchase it, we have a, um, an agreement at this point, and that this purchase sale agreement has other factors in it that were never discussed or had been discussed and decided that, you know, they shouldn't be in the purchase sale agreement um, beforehand. And that's a little concerning because there's some stuff in there that um, it shouldn't be there, put it that way. So we need time to be able to look at the final purchase sale agreement, have our attorney look at it and before we sign. Okay. I believe the point that Debbie is pointing out is that further down in the agreement, which Larry and I did not get, get to that level by Friday afternoon, is a reference to that when the system is becomes the ports, there's a clause in there that basically is a, a 12 month warranty against catastrophic, catastrophic uh, problems. And it does exclude the well house and, you know, well and all that, but, you know, I think that's the point she's making is to, to, as a factor like that. It's like, it's never been worked out. Okay. How that's going to happen. And to just 
planet and well, <laughs> you know how that, that you know the you know how that you know how that goes um it it uh, even if you haven't covered it, it becomes an immediate point of discussion and i understand that um, yeah yeah and so it brings up um a discussion that that needed that needs to happen even if it's at the last hour of the of the of the situation so i i i understand debbie so thank you yeah. That was in the boilerplate agreement that uh, we got from the lawyer. That wasn't something I threw in there at the last minute. So just, okay. you know, I want to make that clear to everybody. Well, it if sounds I like could, we need to do, go ahead, Commissioner. So if, maybe I'm just being simple, but if we can do this, is see if we get an extension from DOH uh, past the 20th. Uh, we can't do anything unless we get that extension. Unfortunately, this is a bad week. A lot of state employees are off, but if we can see if we get that extension. Two, let's postpone the resolution. I don't feel comfortable with the resolution until Jeff and uh, Debbie and the port are all in agreement with that contract. And then there's another statement, uh, Jeff, that you made in there that I totally agree with is that the contract should, uh, should be made public. Uh, the public should be able to look at that contract for a period of time. It doesn't have to be very long, but just for a period of time, uh, before the commissioner sign off on the resolution. And uh, so, and that's after the agreement with uh, you, Debbie, and the court. So, well, what we can do when we come to, assuming we get the extension, what we can do when we come to an agreement is go ahead and put the contract in its entirety up on our website. I agree with that. So, and I, I think we have an alibi. Um, uh, Larry, you know, being uh, that this happens, that this date for tomorrow happens to be right in the middle of, like even to uh, speaking to um, Commissioner Jackson's point, um, a lot of people aren't aren't available and around to answer some questions, and I, I think that they 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 might have some mercy on that. I'm hoping anyway. Me, <clears throat> me too. And like I said, Holly's going to reach out to them, and I thought if I have to, I'll reach out to our state representatives and ask them to reach out. Okay. That, All right. That, and that tends to uh, to get quicker response and more positive response than trying to do this ourselves a lot of time. All right. And do you have comment in regard to the water? Yes, I do. Okay. Can you can you hear me, folks? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I um, you know I saw this the agenda for the special meeting um, up with uh, four items. And I sent you an email this morning or last evening regarding those four. This particular item, um, the last I heard that was gonna be on the agenda was just with the consultant uh, for the lobbyist. Uh, so then all these things get added onto it. And I, I called Jeff, uh, this weekend and talk to him about this. And I agree, none of the supporting documents or any information was put on the website. It just, a resolution was thrown up there that you were going to approve. That's really irregular. And he shared with me the email that he sent to you folks this morning. Um, if that is true, uh, what was said about the meters and the installation and that, uh, this is no is deja vu of Belfair Water District and Dave Tipton. And I think some of you folks will remember that issue. You need to be more transparent in what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, anything else, commissioners, for Jeff? Or uh, right now, obviously, the resolution is not going to be it's tabled until... So I I, I, as far as transparency go, I would I would like to speak to that. Uh, so that's that's why we're having a discussion right now, and um, and and Jeff's um, concern in sharing that with all of us, and 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 the response that uh, our executive director gave. Um, so again, I think it goes back to um, the way Jeff would uh, do things, as opposed to um, get it done type of um, executive director approach to this thing, and I. I think this is an opportunity to um, not just be transparent, which we're doing right now, uh, Ms. Rambusker, but an opportunity to to, um, to to show that 
we're not holding anything back here. <laughs> There's everything's on the table, um, you know, and uh, we we have these special meetings for that purpose. So thank you. I'd like to make one comment about that. I don't believe putting a an incomplete agreement, one that still has negotiations to be done and legal opinions to be expressed on the website and making it a public document is a good idea. I'm no, it is, no, it is not, no, actually. No. We I'm should not, not put that on. No. And I would not, I would agree not to put it on until we get right. to the signing. And, and yeah. that's why we didn't put it up there. Yeah. I hope I didn't, you didn't misunderstand me. I'm certainly not thinking, <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> That's that that's that that's how you end up down rabbit holes that aren't real. So yeah, thank you. Could I could I just comment one more time? I didn't say the agreement. I said supporting documents like what the resolution actually says. You folks were ready to approve a resolution today, and that thing isn't up on the agenda. It says possible action, sir. That's true. It does say possible action, but how okay. did it even get on the agenda in the first place? Okay. Well, we have that right, um, Mr. Van Buskirk. So we appreciate your comment. Thank you. Okay. I think with the water system purchase, any other any other comments, Jeff? No. Okay. Um, I think we can move on for setting the date for the regular meeting. I, I, I think it's probably a really good idea to make a motion to table that. The regular meeting? Oh, to make a motion to uh, table resolution of the purchase and sale agreement. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll make, I'll make, thank you. Um, uh, I'll make that motion to table that uh, for uh, until there's further resolve with a couple of issues that we brought up about the extension and a possible interim. And in the meantime, um, that, uh, that, that needs to be resolved um, between uh, Jeff and Debbie Carey and the port before um, we do anything forward. From I, was, here. I was gonna suggest that as well. Okay, all right. Okay, That's my motion. A, I'll second the motion. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. so moved. Tabled until further notice. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to set the date for the regular meeting in 2023. I would like to say Wednesday, if possible. I think that's the 4th, January 4th. Would that work for everybody? That's fine with me. The 4th is fine. Yeah, the 4th works for me, too. Okay. <laughs> I just bought my 2023 calendar. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, excellent. Do we need a motion for that too? Yes. I'll okay. make a motion that we move the January 2nd uh, regular meeting to January 4th. Okay, oh, second. Second. No, second. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, so move. Next is discussion about the new meeting minute guidelines. Have you? Uh, gentlemen, have you had a chance to look at some of the documents from Jurassic Parliamentary? Yeah, I went through some of them. I haven't gone through all the I haven't gone through all the readings yet. But uh, okay. I'm going to ask Leanne to expound on this, and she's done all the research on it. Yeah, thank you. I I've looked at it too, but that would that would be great. Okay. I went through the I went through the handout, which was lengthy. Much of it didn't pertain, but minutes and we need to deal with that. So Leanne, would you? Yeah, I'm gonna turn my me? volume off so we don't have feedback here. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, go. Let's see. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, yeah, earlier this year, Sunshine and I did a workshop um, from Jurassic Parliament and about the minutes and the role of the clerk. Um, and you know, we've been looking at this pretty much since we did this initially. Um, it's not a knee jerk reaction to a meeting. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to read um, page six and um, slide number 25 from the workshop. 
And the purpose of a minutes is according to Robert's rules, the purpose of minutes is to record action by the body. Minutes record what is done, not what is said. Um, and I think, you know, this is from a standpoint of um, like me typing up the minutes, it's more efficient to do action minutes. Um, there's a lot less confusion. Um, let's see, there's four types of minutes. This is slide number 28. What, um, let's see, what goes in the minutes, the difference between testimony given in public hearings and public comment provided at local government goes over that. Um, but the type of minutes are action minutes, summary minutes, detailed minutes, or transcript like at the court level. Um, so, you know, we don't, we don't have to do discussion. If somebody wants to refer back to our, our tapes, that's fine. Um, but I mean, this is just Robert's rules of order. So, um, yeah. And then you don't have the problems that we have with, um, misinterpreting something. Um, and then everybody like Jeff has to have us correct them. Uh, because he meant something different. This avoids all of that confusion. Another big thing in this um, workshop was it's a really bad idea to um, post your draft minutes on the website prior to the meeting, um, which will also avoid having to give out all of these different versions um, and confuse people like Ken. So, you know, I've learned a lot. I've taken this class twice now and it's, um, it's two and a half hours. Um, and a lot of it doesn't really apply to us, but the basics of the minutes and posting draft agendas. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, you know, I, I really think we just need to get back to the basics on that. I, I agree with you. Yeah. I also agree. I always like minutes that just reflect whatever action the commissioners or the board has taken. And if there is public comment where a, a member of the public recommends something that the board do, I don't mind having that person's name in there, but it's exactly what the uh, member of the public said is that I believe the board should be doing this or explore this. So, but I like our minutes to be shorter, uh, especially I think one of these days it's going to have to be addressed that these uh, meetings are recorded. So there's a more reflective amount of information by reviewing the meeting online than there is on a meeting minutes. So uh, before we had Zoom, I would look at meeting minutes that were condensed into a couple paragraphs, although the meeting went two or three hours. So uh, I think we have the option of both great worlds, condense our meeting minutes, just do action items, and anything else that's said or can be questioned can be viewed online, so. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, one of my thoughts on that was just for action minutes, you know, with the regular meetings, and then if we want summary minutes for special meetings, and that would be fine, but um, I don't think anything more than that. And And they also, like Leanne had said, they also gave guidelines about the difference between um, writing what public comment is and then writing what uh, public, you know, rec hearings are. Those are different. You apply those differently. So, anyway, I'm yep. I'm with you on that too, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Sheridan, do you have any thoughts, comments, or anything? No, other than uh, that, I very much like to go to. Uh, action minutes um, ex with the exception of, um, of, of doing maybe doing some summary um, with a special um, meetings uh, for regular meetings definitely action and uh, and combination I, all our meetings should be action but with special meetings um, we we can we, we can uh, Leanne can address and summarize um, and basically the summary is not a, a direct quotation of what's going on she's just capturing the essence of the of, uh, of a discussion, um, uh, you know, the, the pointed thing. So that that's, so we can get away from splitting hairs on perceptions that um, that get created that are not, that are basically not intention, intentional on any of our part or even the public. Um, so I, that, I'm good with that. 
for sure. Great. I don't, I don't know if we need a motion in regard to any of that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's never a bad idea. To no, it's not a bad idea. I'll make a motion that we resort to um, action minutes um, like like uh, Commissioner Jackson spoke to these are recorded meetings. Um, you know, as far as who, who said what, but um, we really want to get back to the basics and, and uh, be more efficient in that regard. I'll make a motion to adopt action minutes. I'll second. Okay. Um, I see some, uh, Ken, you want to make a discussion, I mean, a comment, go ahead. I, I would like to make a comment. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, I would, can. I would uh, uh, really like you folks to uh, table this until after you hear my complaint. Thank you. We'd like okay. to hear it right now. I think it was in regard to an employee. And so uh, that is not scheduled until January. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, my complaint was against both the executive director, Leanne and the board itself. Uh, okay. And I would suggest that you table this action until I can discuss it with you. Thank you. Well, commissioners, we can go ahead and vote on it. Um, it's your choice. I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not understanding that, but that's okay. Um, you no, know, I'm going to make a motion that we we refer to act action minutes in our meetings. I'm not understanding, you know, understanding that at all. Um, anyway, okay. Ed, move forward. I'll, I agree. We we can move forward uh, with that motion, but I guess I would like. Just go back to what Mr. Van Buskirk was saying. I don't think uh, uh, whatever he has to say, we could always change if we agree with it. So uh, sure. uh, I'll second okay. the motion. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So moved. Thank you, Leanne and Sunshine for taking the time for that. And thank you for you know sending off the information to us too. I will look through all that. It is kind of, it's quite extensive and gives clarification, I think, of terms, a terminology as well. And I think it would behoove us for to share some of that with the community about some of those terms and like action item minutes and what that means, um, summary minutes, what that means, uh, detailed minutes, what that means to everybody. Sure. So it's not, like that. it's not a bad, you know, it's not. It's mostly for the efficiency and the fact, yeah. like all of you have said, the fact that this is recorded, it says it all. If there's yeah. a question, you can always look at the recording to see what was said and and the implications of body language and in tone, yes. and all that. So thank and, you very much. Anything we can do to, to um, in, improve our professional, um, uh, the way we approach things is, is a positive thing. So, yeah. I great. could post the handout on the website. Sure, that'd be that great. Be, it's yeah. long. <laughs> Do they? I, I, oh, excuse me. Uh, is there a, a list of terms uh, when they talk about an action agenda, summary agenda, uh, transcript, or excuse me, minute, minutes, like set agenda? Yes. It's in, it's in the handout. Okay. And it's kind of, I think you kind if you were just. Look for it. Yeah. If you were to just post that, Leanne, that yeah. would be. Yeah, yeah and, also and anybody, you know, if you go to Jurassic Parliament, um, I think it costs $75 this time, um, but anybody can attend it. So the public, anybody. Right. This no, handout, true. however, also deals extensively with motions mm -hmm. and their order. And I've discovered that, you know, looking at this, getting a little more educated about it, because we're small, right. it's easy to not follow necessarily the ranking. Right. And, and so I just want to make that clarification that sometimes being that we are small, there's not as a, a tight regiment, at least that we've, according to this, is adhered to because we are small. Well, no we're, shame here. There's always room to learn more about how to do things better. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, yeah, anything else? a whole lot. 
all the way down to you don't actually have to have a motion to an, to approve the agenda. It covers um, who can who can change the agenda or ask things to be taken out until, um, for example, Ken's request that's actually not allowed. Um, you know, really, really a lot of information in this. So. Mm -hmm. Keep us well, informed, Leanne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the auditor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, another little note too about uh, not having to approve the agenda that was actually suggested by the Washington Public Ports Association. So she, they kind of win our hierarchy. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, she, in um, cities, cities the presenter are different. actually did say that if you do do that already, um, mm -hmm. then continue. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Excellent. Anything else? Move to adjourn. I'll make, make a motion to adjourn. I make that second motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jeff. Have Debbie. a Merry Christmas and a wonderful week. Yes. Merry Christmas to everybody and yeah. see you next year. <laughs>